Now this is an us, one of the next projects we're going to work on. Work on a little bit today. We have a couple hours of time to uh, devote to this. It's Ray Straub's 175 CB Honda. It's a 1972 bike, and I'm ready to start working on the parts right now. Getting them looking just like you see in the picture. Now I've had the parts right from Ray sitting here for well, quite a while now. But what I wanted to do this, I, I thought this would be a good day to get the side covers filled in, get them in prime, and any time I have after that, I could spend working on a tank. Now as I look over the parts and I see some of the things, and obviously these are extremely old parts, uh, 72. They're original parts. I can see that they've got a lot of stuff, has to, a lot of grit and grime. So what I thought I'd do... First thing, of course, with any of these jobs, I've got to totally clean them. The tank Ray had used paint remover on, but it's got several little dents. And this one's here's a dent. I think what I'll do is I'll just work on the side covers today, let the tank go to the next session. Yes, yeah, some spots has to be done here. And it's got some little funky things going on with the emblems. Now, these emblems don't come off, according to Ray. He didn't want to take them off. So I think what I'll do is I'll JB weld these on and back mask them. And he has the original emblems for here, so we'll just paint around it. And normally, if we weren't going to do that, I'd bondo that in. But I think for today, we're just going to work on the side covers. And for this, just pre-cleaning, I think the best, the best product I've found for all this clean, good old simple green. If I were to start doing anything with these sanding or anything scraping I don't know if these parts have grease wax or whatever on them just the simplest way is don't don't even take a chance because what happens even then I can see it's already coming off on this side there's dirt and grit and grime and, and whatever but step one is always just get the parts as clean as possible now it's a good idea to just let that sit. Give that a few minutes to sit and we'll get a, well, whatever we can do with sandpaper. And just see what we have underneath there because there's several coats of paint underneath there. This is not virgin. This is not a virgin thing. It's already got paint on it. I want to see if that's going to be just coming right off or if it's going to be a problem. Now if you were to paint this right over what amounts to be all this grit and grime and even just in touching it and holding it, you're going to wind up, that paint is going to be contaminated a little bit. There's just no substitute. Now these parts are in really, for 1972 parts, they're in really good shape as far as the little tangs aren't broken. So we could spend a little extra time here and make sure these, normally I have, I always have to fix or remake those parts. The paint that's already on here has already crazed. It's crazed in a couple of spots. It's bubbling and peeling in other spots. So before we do anything, I wanted to mention, I have painted many, many Honda side covers in particular. Many, many plastic parts. They have a, if, if this is not sealed properly, they melt. The paint, the, all the paint will go on and look just like that at some point in time. So it's real important for me to get as much of this old stuff scuffed up, get the parts rough, and get some primer on to just basically seal that plastic. So now I'm taking a little piece of 220 wet and dry sandpaper, and what I want to do, I want to see what's down underneath. I want to see, I just don't want to just pile on paint on top of paint on top of paint. What I'd like to see is what I'm dealing with, and I can see something that's really well, it's not good news, that's for sure. Let's see how bad these parts really are. See, you never know until you actually get down to underneath whatever's on here. And Ray said he's not going to deal with these emblems. I just should fill in these holes. So, And I guess at some future time he could glue the emblems on if he wanted to. But here's, here's the real issue. Now, we're down. That's, that's the real color of the plastic. Right there is the color of the plastic. So... We want to sand as much of this extra paint. This is not factory paint. Up here there's a big glob. And this will be a little... Now see, this is what happens when you paint 
In the old days, when you used to paint Honda side covers with acrylic lacquer, that's what would happen almost every time. So, just uh, some 220 sandpaper and 20 minutes of sanding, and we'll have one of these ready. And now, as I'm sanding this, I realize I was wrong. The black is just part of the paint. This, well, here's what it was. This part was originally this kind of milk toast color. Then it had a coat of white. Then it had a coat of red. Then it was black. Somebody painted this black, and then after that, they painted it red. So this bike has several coats of... There's really going to be a lot more sanding than I thought there was. I want to get as much of this off as I can. I don't have to get it all off, but I want it to be smooth to the touch. before I, And I want to fill these holes before I seal it with primer. And here is a bunch of big chips out of this. And since I know this is going to be... This is going to be a really nice little bike for Ray. I, I think it's going to be a cool bike, period. So now this is ready. I'm going to bondo in these holes. That's what Ray wanted. And again, what will happen if he decides he ever wants to put... If you ever do find these emblems, you just cut the tangs off and glue them on with JB Weld. That would be no problem at all. So we haven't boxed ourselves in. This sanded out relatively well. But again, you're looking at quite a, uh, quite a chunk of time to bring these parts back. I'm going to sand a little more here. I don't want to get it's this crazed stuff. I'm always afraid some thinner gets in there, and this is just going to be a problem. And this is available at AutoZone. It's 8013 m You need hardener with it, of course. And what I did, I mixed up a little batch. Just spread it on. It doesn't have to be fancy, but I want it to come through the holes. Once it dries, I'll work on the other part. I'll sand the other part while this is drying, and I'll do a final sanding. And that'll be... Then I can work on this. I can sand that part while this is drying and have this the primer drying on, drying on one while I'm working on the other one. I'm going that that whole idea of going back and forth is a real time saver. Now this one while the bondo is drying, this one is pretty much a, a carbon copy of the other one. It's got a lump here, some cracks in the paint here. It looks like they had the same old 70s. This might have been painted in the 70s. Who knows? All the paint coming unglued. Hey, this is when paint doesn't interact, and it's not really the paint. It's the thinner goes in and attacks the paint underneath it. And this was, uh, like, like I said, when the Honda 750 first came out, and when I remember the 750, of course, early 70s, a lot of people were custom painting these bikes, and I was painting a lot of them. And boy, they all did this. And through a process of elimination of trying different thinners, spraying things dry, and not using acrylic lacquer. The modern paints are a lot better, but they still, you still can always have that crazing problem. And we just had it on Mark's bike. So we're very careful to seal this up before we put any colored paint on it. I'll do this one off camera, and we'll get back to, uh, we'll be ready to do the Bondo on the other part. The sand the Bondo. Now the Bondo on the first part is dry and I just want to smooth it out a little bit and final sand it. a final little bit on this I'm going to have to do by hand I can see that already I have a little block and by the time we finish this part the bondo should be dry in a second part and we can take these outside get a coat of primer sealer on them Any job like this, it just, it's like digging a ditch. And if, when you start it, you think, oh my God, I'm never going to finish this. It's going to be so much work. And, and it is. But as you get into it, now say I'm into it a couple hours already, 
it then you start to see the light at the end of the tunnel and you say wow this is going to be a nice part now these parts i'm sure it'd be almost impossible to find in perfect condition factory new condition but because we're able to restore them and and of course save the money of people who have these things that are in good condition usually want top dollar for them so and they are very difficult to paint. They are not as easy as they they first look, and they do, even this one, they have a tendency to melt at some point. Now this primer has a sealer in it, which usually, not always, usually works pretty well on these type of plastic parts, or especially Ducati mirrors, which have another tendency to uh, have paint issues. And in our case, it's best to get on two coats, three coats, about 20 minutes apart. Now we're just going to let that dry, see if the paint crazes. If it doesn't, 20 minutes from now, I'll work on the other part, the Bondo. Have that part ready. But if you try to get it on all in one coat and get where it would dip, have a tendency to run it has more of a tendency to melt the plastic so we're hoping we're gonna sneak by here I just want to mention this there are times that you can put the second or the third coat on the first coat goes on and a second coat or third and then somewhere in that mix you wind up having a problem but uh, maybe this is gonna be our lucky day well I guess we're gonna find out one way or another here but we always just try to stack the deck in our favor now the beauty of this is while one part is drying, this is ready. I'm going to do the same sanding with the machine and then final hand sand it. Take it outside, repeat the process, prime it, and hopefully that's going to, that's going to dry up well. But, but all the while, whenever you're painting plastic, you always have there's a chance there's going to be a real problem. Now, while I'm waiting for this to dry to get another coat of primer on, I want to get at least three coats of primer on there. I want to really seal that underlayment, everything that's under there. But while that's drying, I'll have 20 minutes, half an hour, I can do some body work on that tank. So while all our stuff is drying out there, I have some Gorilla Tape to uh, seal up the gas tank. Now, it's a funny thing. When Ray was up here, we tried to remove the petcock. And you, it looks like you need a very thin, thin wall uh, wrench to get in there, an eight millimeter wrench. And I didn't have one, so what I'll just do is back mask the padcock. But for the the fuel cap, I always prefer to use the gorilla tape. And anybody doesn't know about Gorilla Tape, it's it's like super duct tape. Really good stuff. This tape's going to need quite a bit of Bondo work. From I, I checked, it's dented in well, several places. So what I want to do is just rough sand everything. I'll just use that Bondo. It'll help the Bondo stick better too. And while I'm thinking about it, Ray said another thing, that these tanks tended to rot out on the bottom. So what I'm going to try to do is just be real careful here, not to go through or not to over... In fact, I don't even sand that bottom. And then put a little bit of extra paint on that just to protect it. Now, as I'm looking this over, and I'm, there's even more spots than this. I'm sure I'll find when I do the more sanding. This, this poor tank had a lot of... Uh, had a rough service life. Kind of like me. <laughs> anyway, we're going to put that aside to dry and go look at the side covers. Uh, next step on this is going to be to just wet sand this out with some 600 and put one more coat of primer on. As I'm wet sanding this out, there's still some little high spots and things. So each time I sand this, it'll get a little bit nicer 
up in here, all the little areas we had that were, in fact, there's a little spot right there that's bad. Where our Bondo is, looks like that's going to be fine. Now I'm just looking at how this is dried up. Pretty much ready for, uh, I think we're ready for some paint here. This thing has one more little spot I've got to address. These are pretty much going to be ready. Maybe, maybe I'll sand them one more time. Because it's for Ray and Marilyn. But look at this. This is the fun part here. Couldn't be more fun. Machine sanding Bondo. I've got about 90% of it done. Time to put the second skim coat on. And while that's drying, I could work on the side covers. Now, the second coat of Bondo's on there now. I always check the pad, make sure it's that's dry, that's dry. Now I'm going to have to start being a little bit caref more careful. And it looks like this side of the tank is more of an issue than the other one. This is just a small dent, small dent. Just going to be a labor of love. That's all there is to it. Now, needless to say, the final little bit I'm going to do with a sanding block, hard block, and do it by hand, especially on the side here. This side is going to need a lot of work. Okay, all the rough sanding's in. All the little final stuff I'm going to have to do once it's in primer, but it looks like it's going to rain any minute now. I'm happy about that. So what I decided to do is, oh, as I say, it, the bondo blows away. I'll get this in primer put everything to dry overnight and count our successes. This was probably a pretty good day to get most of the prep work done. The tank will need a lot of extra little detailing, but I think the side covers are ready for paint. Well, the way this is playing out, it certainly looks like, certainly looks like we're be able to detail out the tank on the next session and we'll be ready this will be ready for the first coat of paint. That was a pretty good day, a very good day in fact, and we did beat the rain. So, hope you picked up some tips for your projects, and hope you enjoy sharing our projects with us. And thanks for watching.